Okay, so big picture looking at the kidney. So kidney is sort of this sort of shape. That's terrible, but there we go. And you've got one tube coming in, and this tube coming in is the renal. Anything to do with the kidney is called renal, and it's the tube coming in, so it's the renal artery. You've got two tubes coming out. One takes blood, and this is the renal again, but this time the renal vein. And the other one takes the filtrate that hasn't been reabsorbed and that is called the ureter and the ureter is carrying it down to the bladder where you urinate it out from the urethra you've got two kidneys the left and the right now next thing to point out is that the kidney for all its interestingness it, the really interesting bit is the functional unit of the kidney which is the nephron or nephron now Let's have a look at one of these. So for this you have a blood vessel coming in. This is coming off the um, renal artery and this is known as the arteriole. And this is the afferent arteriole. And we have here a glomerulus, which we're going to talk about, which is a network of capillaries. And then we've got a small tube coming out, which is known as the efferent arteriole. So this is a afferent arterial going in and E, efferent, coming out. Think E for exit and A comes first. They're both arterioles. Also, remember there's a big difference in the lumen between the afferent and the efferent arteriole. Those are big differences in size. Now, within the glomerular capillaries, you've got slits. These are known as fenestrations. <coughs> and then we're around the outside of that, we've got a physical filter, which is the basement membrane, which allows everything with a relative molecular mass of lower than 68,000 to go through. So anything with a relative molecular mass higher than that can't go through. That means that what stays in the blood is anything that is cellular or any of the big plasma proteins. So red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, big plasma proteins all stay in the blood. Everything else could potentially get squeezed through. And 80% of the plasma leaves through the efferent arteriole and of the 100% that goes in. And 20% of the plasma and everything in it gets pushed through the basement membrane and then into the renal capsule the renal capsule is on the other side and this is collecting the filtrate and the filtrate contains the 20% of plasma that's been forced across the basement membrane which is the physical filter right this process is known as ultra filtration and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the in a future video then the ultra filtrate passes down firstly through the proximal convoluted tubule which has cells with microvilli. I'll join them together and do it like this. So the filtrate has gone down here, down here, and continued to go down the lumen of the proximal convoluted tubule. It then goes down the descending limb of the loop of Henle, up the ascending limb of the loop of Henle through the distal convoluted tubule and then down the collecting duct then this empties into the ureter and then finally into the bladder so the journey is that you go through first of all um, up here you go through ultra filtration ultra filtration Ultrafiltration occurs here. Then we have selective reabsorption, which occurs here in the proximal convoluted tubule. Then you have the descending limb of the loop of Henle and the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, which generate the ion gradient, which is used later on to concentrate the filtrate as the urine comes down the collecting duct. Now, 
The important thing to consider, one of the many important things to consider about the kidney is don't think of the nephrons as acting in isolation. You have 1.2 million nephrons per kidney and they all affect each other. So if we look at our kidney here, so this has a region, this part here is called the cortex and then the region below that is called the medulla. Now if we zoom into this, if we turn and if we consider an individual nephron, well we have the um, glomerulus and bones capsule in the um, cortex, we have the proximal convoluted tubule in the cortex, then we have the descending limb, the ascending limb, the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. Now it is important to realise that nephrons don't act individually. So a, an individual nephron is actually being affected by the conditions of the nephrons around it. So remember you've got 1.2 million nephrons in each kidney and they're all stacked up in the same orientation so each nephron is actually being affected by the nephrons around each other so whenever you're considering the nephron remember that as the nephrons are orientated in the same way so they all have the loops of Henle going down into the medulla back up and then the collecting duct running back through the medulla the purpose of the loop of Henle is to establish the ion gradient, which is then used to concentrate the urine as the filtrate goes down the collecting duct. Okay, so let's quickly review what was going on here. The kidney individual filtration unit is the nephron. We have um, glomerulus, which is a network of capillaries. We have basement membrane, which is the filter. We have the Bowman's or renal capsule, which collects the ultrafiltrate, which is a result of ultrafiltration. We have the proximal convoluted tubule, which is where selective reabsorption of all of the good stuff that you want to keep occurs. And then we have the descending limb of the loop of Henle, the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, which is about generating the ion gradient into the medulla, which is then going to be used to concentrate the filtrate and get the water out so you do have the correct level of osmoregulation in your blood plasma. And that's as the urine, or the filtrate, sorry, goes down the collecting duct and water is absorbed from the collecting duct or not absorbed depending on the water potential in your blood plasma. Okay, I think we'll stop there. Please feel free to subscribe or recommend or whatever you do in, in YouTube land. Bye.